Hello everyone, this is Colleen Lama, Starseed Astrologer, Spiritual Messenger from SacredSoulEmpowerment.com, here to do your weekly angel card reading for Monday, November 23rd through Sunday, November 29th, 2015. So uh, you see that the cards are already laid out for the week, and that's because we have a lot of astrological energies that are going on this week, a lot to talk about. So I went ahead and I did my meditation and I asked my angels and guides to direct me to what cards were going to be in everyone's highest and best interest as far as the message for the week. We are using Doreen Virtue's Angel Tarot deck and we do have a fourth card that wanted to come out as a special message card or uh, to, for everyone or to wrap up the whole week with this card as far as the energy. And then your special message card this week is coming from the Syrian Starseed Tarot by Patricia Corey and Alyssa Bartha. Your stones of choice for your special message card are Malachite. And this Malachite is a stone of the heart chakra. Whoops, I almost dropped it. Stone of the Heart Chakra, it's got a beautiful emerald green light about it. It reminds me of Archangel Raphael with his healing emerald green light. So it vibrates to the Heart Chakra and healing of uh, matters of the heart, uh, healing of relationships, and even healing of the physical body. And your second stone of choice is going to be Orange Calcite. The orange calcite vibrates to the sacral chakra, your center of passion and creative self-expression. And um, this is a, a nice light orange, so it has this kind of light, fresh, airy feel to it. Your third stone of choice is amazonite. And amazonite is a blue-green stone vibrating between the heart chakra and the throat chakra, encompassing both of those chakras in a way. But there is a chakra in between those two major chakras, the thymus chakra. So this can help with balancing the immune system. And if we take into account the heart chakra of uh, matters of the heart opening up to unconditional love, and then the throat chakra, speaking your truth, um, and being clear about what it is that you're speaking, but speaking it with compassion. So again, the three stones of choice are the malachite, which also, by the way, um, is a stone of prosperity and abundance, as well as dealing with the heart chakra, the orange calcite, and then the amazonite. Now, I have to also make mention here that <laughs> right before I started my video, I happened to look up, and on the ceiling we have a little animal totem that is joining us. Uh, for the weekly reading. It's a great big spider. <laughs> it's really kind of directly over my head. So I hope it stays up there on the ceiling and, and doesn't decide to fall off of the ceiling. That would not be good. But to me, the, the spider is uh, a message of weaving your own web, you know, weaving weaving your own circumstances in life. So it's about magic. The spider has uh, the magic of creation associated with it, and it's about kind of directing or weaving your own web of life, which is a very good and strong uh, totem message. Okay, so let's start by looking at the astrology for this week. A lot going on, as I said. We start out on Monday the 23rd, um, with Venus. Venus is the planet of love and relationships, uh, all kinds of relationships, but also the planet that deals with money and finances, and it's opposing Uranus and Aries on Monday. Now, if we back up to last week, on Friday, it actually um, was in a challenging aspect to Pluto. So I want to say that from Friday of last week through Monday here, the 23rd of this week's weekly reading, there's a lot going on with uh, redirection or transformation in relationships and or money matters. Now, with relationships, it can actually help to deepen relationships and transform them in that way. Um, with the opposition today or, or on Monday uh, with Uranus, it's going to um, bring in perhaps some surprising developments. Now, the surprising developments you never know with Uranus what you're going to get, so it can bring positive surprises or just surprises, surprises. We'll put it that way. 
but there's definitely a lot going on. And if we're dealing with money matters, this is also, again, the possibility that there, your, your money and finances are undergoing some sort of transformation, uh, redirection, having to look at things from a different perspective, or you know things may be growing, or you might have to pay a little bit more attention to organizing and detailing where your money's where your money's going, or what you need to do with your money. So, a lot going on um, with that configuration. As we move into Tuesday, the 24th of November. Mercury in the sign of Sagittarius, which is very inspiring and creative and idea-oriented and uplifting and, and can be quite an optimistic kind of communicator, but it's connecting with Saturn that day. And Saturn sometimes is a little bit of um, a grounded energy. So let's, let's look at it two ways. From a positive perspective, it can help to ground your ideas or focus your ideas and help to manifest your ideas. It can also do the same with communication, so that your, your communications with other people are more focused and direct, um, and it's, it's got an ability to get things done, to organize and get things done, and let's move in a particular direction and be, being really focused about that. But also Mercury coming up to Saturn can sometimes bring us down a little bit. So, you know, it really depends on you. It depends on what your intentions are and where you're at already. Try to use the former energy to where it just brings you more of a sense of focus and direction and to not allow the Saturn influence to kind of bring you down mentally or to, to you know, bring in a sense of frustration or feeling limited or restricted in some way. Now, as we move into Wednesday, Mercury goes on to now square Neptune. And a square is considered a challenging aspect. Now, this square to Neptune can sometimes bring in some fuzzy thinking or confusion with thinking. Although, on the other hand, it's really good for meditation and visualization. It's good with uh, going with the flow and tapping into your intuition and tapping into the messages from your angels and guides. But with Neptune and Mercury, you have to just use your powers of discernment because Neptune and Mercury together can sometimes bring, again, some confusing energies or disinformation or false information. And this can be the same with communications with other people. So in communicating with other people, kind of read between the lines and really tap in and use your intuition as far as what's being said, what's not being said. Read between the lines of the energies here. So between Tuesday and Wednesday, with Mercury connecting with both Saturn and Neptune, uh, you know, there might, again, be a tendency for some confusion and not being sure about things, but you just kind of want to focus and ground your energies, do some research if you need to, to kind of back up what's, what's going on with those communications or the information that's coming in. And again, use it to focus and move forward in a grounded way. Now, this is all leading up to a full moon that also occurs on Wednesday, the full moon in Gemini at three degrees. And this full moon in Gemini at three degrees is making what's called a T-square with both Saturn and Neptune. Saturn's at about six degrees going to seven degrees. Neptune is stationed at seven degrees. Remember last week it went stationary direct, but it's such a slow-moving planet, it hasn't really picked up any speed yet to move. So this is going to be a really powerful, what we call T-square configuration with the Moon and Saturn and Neptune, and even more powerful because Neptune is still at its stationary point, which kind of intensifies the energies of Neptune. And a full Moon, of course, is a powerful energy anyway. Now, I have to say that the Moon um, being in the sign of Gemini, Gemini is a mutable sign with it connecting to Saturn. Saturn is in the mutable sign of Sagittarius, and then connecting with Neptune. Neptune is in the mutable sign of Pisces. What does mutable mean? Mutable means that it's very changeable energy. It's an energy that can go in one direction and then suddenly move in another direction. Or you think it's one way and then you're being redirected to another way. It's very kind of changeable and, and um, 
not stable. It's not a stable focused energy. So be open to being redirected. Be open to new ideas. Be open to uh, messages from your guides and angels that might take you in a completely opposite direction than where you're going or what you think you're going to. So I really feel like, um, again, use your powers of discernment and you're really going to need to kind of ground yourself this week because there's a lot, a lot going on and a lot going on with the mutable signs, a lot of Neptune kinds of things. So you're really going to need to meditate or walk, you know, get out in nature, uh, walk in your bare feet on the ground. Um, you know, exercise is a good way to, to ground your energy as well. So whatever you can do to kind of ground it will help you to focus a little bit better. As we move to Thursday the 26th, Saturn is finally squaring Neptune exactly. Now we've been feeling Saturn squaring Neptune for about three or four weeks now. It's been that crazy energy that's been going on um, within our lives and all over the planet with third dimensional reality versus other realities. In other words, what we see with our own eyes and what may really truly be are maybe two different things. It has been bringing in uh, some confusion energies. It's been bringing in lessons of uh, groups of people or organizations that there's judgment going on. And uh, some of this judgment, again, is, is um, spiritual belief systems or political belief systems. There's been all that kind of uh, Saturn karma, so to speak, being dredged up. And again, even though we, you know, look out there and we hear the news or we see images on TV or the internet about what's happening in this country or that country or that city or this city or between this group and that group, you got to use, again, your, your powers of discernment because not everything that you're hearing or seeing is truth. That's what Saturn Neptune is saying. Saturn square Neptune is what is an illusion and what's real. And there's a lot going on behind the scenes that you don't know, and there's a lot going on that's not being um, communicated to the public in a truthful way. And this is, is with your personal lives as well. So just use your ability to kind of read between the lines and discern what's truth and what's fiction. As we move to Saturday the 28th, the moon in Cancer is in a challenging aspect to Mars, and then Pluto, and then Uranus. So you know, the moon being in Cancer, this is all about our emotions and our feelings. It also rules home and family. Um, and this is the weekend after Thanksgiving for those of you in the United States. Thanksgiving is on Thursday and then, you know, we usually extend it, uh, you know, over the weekend. We're with our family and friends and loved ones. So there might be some things going on a little bit touchy emotionally. There's a, a great potential with the moon and Cancer uh, posing Pluto and squaring Uranus for transformation and change. Um, and this can be, again, depending on the consciousness of the person or, um, you know, where we are as far as how we project our energies. There's a, a, a possibility for positive transformation and redirection, but with that square to Mars can bring in a little bit of emotional frustration and a little bit of the fighting element. You know, Mars sometimes is a little bit of a fighter, but it is in the sign of Libra, and Mars and Libra likes to try to keep the peace and likes to try to stay balanced and likes to look at both sides of the situation. So that's a positive thing. So hopefully we can all stay balanced on Saturday. And going into Sunday, the sun, which is in Sagittarius now, is in a challenging aspect to Neptune and then comes up to meet up with Saturn. And again, there's this kind of uh, energies of... Um, you know, spiritual judgment that can kind of come in, lessons or tests regarding your belief system. Now, it's good to stand true to your beliefs, but it doesn't mean we have to make everybody else believe what we believe, or it doesn't mean that we should allow somebody else to try to, um, you know, very aggressively persuade us to believe as they believe. This is about letting everybody have their own beliefs, and then that's okay. You know, I might believe one thing. You can believe another thing. Maybe we can meet in the middle. We have to respect one another with differing belief systems. And with the sun 
with Neptune and Saturn on Sunday, um, this can just be a time to kind of uh, try to project that tolerance aspect and that non-judgmental aspect. It might be, again, a little bit of a confusing energy, a lot of confusing and chaotic twisting and turning of energies that are going on this week. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what the angels and what our guides say for this week. Let's go ahead and look at the first card. Okay, the first card for the week. This is um, Major Arcana number four, the Emperor card with Archangel Michael. And it says organization and logic, structure and discipline and leadership. Now I find it interesting with all of the mutable energies going on, um, some of the more chaotic or unsure energies of, you know, not seeing everything clearly. And again, this is a big test for us to surrender and have trust and faith that we are headed in the right direction or that we are being led by our angels and guides um, in the right direction. Now, the emperor here, which is about structure and logic and manifestation and focus, to me this is a message of needing this. You know, I feel like we need more focus and we need more direction and we need more structure and organization. So I almost feel like we need to perhaps, with certain ideas that we're working on, maybe we're working on a project or something in our career or something with our life path, um, you know, we're trying to get a lot of things done, but all of these energies pulling us in different directions, we may be at a standstill or we may be confused and not know what to do first. I feel like the emperor is saying to structure what it is that you need to do, organize what it is that you need to do, make a list of things that need to get done and make a list of different possibilities that you could follow up on. And that is a way to organize your thoughts. It's a way to organize the plan. You know, it's good to have a plan, but also be open to redirecting the plan or expanding the plan. But for for now, and I've had to do this recently too because of the energies, is I'm writing a list every day of things that I have to get done. And as I think of more things, I put them on my list because just sitting there, you know, in, at one moment in time and trying to write out everything, you're not going to remember. So maybe an hour later, I remember something else. Or maybe as I'm, you know, taking a shower, I remember something else. And immediately I try to go to and put that on my list as well. And then I can follow my list of organized thoughts and plans and things that I need to follow up on, people that I need to call or email, things I need to get done. Um, and I feel like this is what the Emperor and Archangel Michael is letting us know to start off the week. Now I'm also drawn to um, the golden halo above his head and the wings of gold. And there's a strength and a confidence there about that. And I feel like as we try to focus and get more organized, it will give us more confidence to take the next step. It will give us more confidence, even though we don't know all the answers right now, of uh, maybe, you know, what the next step is or something that we need to do that's going to give us um, more of that uh, structure in manifesting our goals in our life. Let's look at the second card for the week, maybe get some more information as we move throughout the week. Okay, the second card for the week, another major arcana. So whenever we have major arcana showing up when we do a reading, it's talking about a lot of important soul lessons throughout the week, a lot of um, important things as far as our soul evolution and growth. Now, this is uh, the strength card with Archangel Ariel, and it says at the bottom, great inner strength, release harsh judgments forgiveness and compassion. Now this is major kind of number 11. The 11 is a master number. And I don't know about you, but more recently, more so than usual, I've been seeing a lot of repeating numbers. 11, 11, I look at the clock and it's 11, 11. Or even 333 3, 3, or 222. 2, 2. But this being a master number, this is the call to the light worker. And I feel like this is illuminating our path. This is illuminating, it's awakening our consciousness, it's expanding our consciousness, putting us in touch with our gifts, talents, and abilities as a light worker, as a soul, what our direction is. The number one is about leadership. Um, and, you know, you have two ones here. So there's a lot of sense of individuality and self-sufficiency and leadership here. This angel has her wings spread out. 
as if she's getting ready to fly. However, she's riding on this tiger. And I feel like this is a very gentle step-by-step -step motion with this tiger. The tiger isn't galloping. It's not moving fast. But yet she's got her, her wings outspread. And that is an indication that she's ready to expand herself, whether it's expanding her consciousness, expanding her creative gifts, expanding her plan as far as her destiny path. Whatever this is about, she's getting ready um, to kind of, you know, expand into that sense of confidence and assuredness. Now, this is also talking about releasing judgments, and we talked about that with the astrology of the week. Release any judgments against yourself if you're being hard on yourself for maybe having a lack of direction or being confused lately. Also, release any judgments against other people or groups. Release judgments about, um, you know, the world and what's going on in the world because that energy is a lower vibration and that judgment energy or the fear, anxiety energy, it's not it's not helping because it's lower vibrational. We want to expand into this sense of peace and confidence and unconditional love and compassion, just like it says, forgiveness and compassion. So it would be really good if we move into that energy of forgiveness and compassion this week. And that, again, is going to give us more of a sense of confidence within ourselves. The last card of the week, wow, we have the Queen of Fire. I love this card. This is confident, warm, intelligent, and graceful. And at the bottom it says, stretch your wings and fly. Don't underestimate yourself. Assert your independence and creativity. So interesting, the first phrase says, spread your wings and fly. And we just talked about Archangel Ariel here, spreading her wings and getting ready to fly. So, you know, whenever we have the court card, uh, court cards, the page, the knight, the queen, the king, it talks about aspects within ourselves, characteristics within ourselves. Um, and stepping into those characteristics. It can also indicate other people coming into our lives that exude those characteristics. So here, I'm feeling more strongly that this is about stepping into these characteristics for ourselves, stepping into our confidence, stepping into our passion. This, to me, is a very passionate card. Stepping into our creativity, our uh, intelligence, again, uh, just like it says, don't underestimate yourself. Even if you've been struggling a little bit here the past few days, don't underestimate yourself. You're getting ready to kind of expand into this um, self-sufficient, confident, queen of fire energy. And pretty soon we're going to be able to move forward. Um, this is also about, again, leadership too. So leadership, independence, take charge ability. All of that energy is an energy that is welling up and getting ready to kind of um, be exuded from you as far as your life path, your career path, your money path, your relationship path. Okay, this fourth card was uh, either an extra message card or a card that's going to wrap up everything for the week. So another major arcana. So this is a very important week. And all of the major arcana, all the cards really are very positive cards, even though the astrology talks about you know, changeable energy and, and possible confusion, you know, and, and everything. But I feel like these positive cards are really telling us that the opportunities are there to uh, have this sense of success. Now, the Sun card with Archangel Uriel, this is also a very leadership-oriented card, stepping into your confidence and stepping into your truth. The message at the bottom says, happy outcome, brilliant new ideas that lead to success. Have confidence in yourself. So, you know, the other thing I'm drawn to is that this is the 19th major arcana. November is a 19 universal month in numerology. So we have that 19 repeating twice. And if you think about what is the 19, the number one is about new beginnings because it's the first number, it's the first of the single digit numbers. The number nine is about endings because it's the last of the single digit numbers. And so within this month, within this card this week, we have endings and new beginnings. And those endings and new beginnings are leading us more to a place of success, a place where we can be confident, where we can be recognized for who we are and what we do. Also drawn to the golden sunflowers down here, the golden energy, uh, like of the sunset behind Archangel Uriel, and even the gold wings. So 
there's a lot of gold in all of these cards that stands out to me, which is our solar plexus chakra, the center of our willpower, where our sense of confidence lies. So I'm really feeling this is going to end up turning out to be a positive week. And what I would say about any of the confusion energies is just, again, go with the flow. Go with the flow with the mutable energies. Have faith and trust that you are being divinely guided and led towards the next step. Step into your confidence and know that you are headed in the right direction. And I really feel that if you intend for this to be a positive week, that it can indeed be a very positive week for everyone. Now let's look at the special message card depending on your stones of choice. So for the Malachite people, let's see what, what you, we have here. Malachite people, we have the two of orbs. Now, if you look at the symbology here, we have a young woman, and she's trying to juggle or balance uh, these two circles, these two orbs. And this, this really is about juggling, I feel. I feel like we're going to be juggling more than one thing, juggling more than one idea, juggling more than one direction. But if you look at the imagery here she's very calm she has a very she's a serious look on her face but a very calm look on her face she doesn't look anxious she doesn't look like she's going to drop the balls she looks like she's very um, very balanced and kind of juggling and holding on to these two different things so I feel like we're going to be very successful at maybe going in two different directions at the same time or following up on two different ideas at the same time. I feel like there's multiple things going on this week, but we're going to very successfully be able to juggle those. Now, this can also be about juggling our finances as well as juggling ideas or juggling directions. But whatever it is, it's going to be it's going to be fine. It's going to be that we're in a place of balance while we're doing that. Um, and I would definitely say to not, if you're focused on a particular direction or wondering what to focus on, at least pick two things and follow up on both of them because this is definitely saying there's more than one thing here that we're needing to, um, that we're needing to kind of uh, dwell on, focus on, or, or even manifest within our lives. Now, I'm also drawn to, at the bottom, the imagery of, it almost looks like fog. It's almost like she's walking barefoot through this foggy energy. So again, that kind of brings up the sense of, even though we might not have all the answers, that if you just kind of take, put one foot in front of the other, as she's doing here, she's got one foot in front of the other, that we're going to be fine. We're going to get there, even though we can't really see what's beyond, you know, the immediate place that we're at. We're going to be okay. We're going to be in a place of calm and balance as we get there. Let's look at the special message card for those that chose the orange calcite. Ooh, love this card. This is the Ace of Flames. So aces are about new beginnings. The flames, which is the fire element, as you can see here with this torch of fire, is a spiritual energy. So there's a new beginning this week, a new beginning of creative energy, of spiritual energy, new ideas, new directions to go in, and it's very positive. You know, to me, the aces are always a very positive energy, and this um, this um, scepter, <laughs> the scepter kind of has this... Uh, little bit of light that's glowing or emanating from it. Beside the flame at the top, there's like this da -da 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 kind of energy, you know, here. Like this is, whatever this new idea is or whatever this new direction is, it's very positive for you. So if you've been wondering, you know, is this the right thing for me? Um, or is this the right uh, next step on my path? This is an indication, a positive indication that it is the right thing. It is the right idea. It is the right step. It is the right direction. And it's a positive new beginning that's ahead of you. Let's look at the card for the people that chose the Amazonite. Amazonite people, the Four of Crystals. So the Four of Crystals, um, this is the earth element. Crystals are of the earth. And again, the Four of Crystals is sort of like the Emperor card that we started out with this week. It's a grounded card. It's a secure card. It's building a sense of security. It's building a solid foundation. Um, this 
man in the card is surrounded by four crystals and so he's organized he's structured it's almost like he's meditating on what needs to be done it almost like he's making a plan so i feel like perhaps with the four of crystals this week if you ground your energies you make a plan again get organized and move in a particular direction I feel like this is going to bring a sense of manifesting something this week because the crystal cards are about manifestation. So very, very positive messages for everyone this week, a very positive overall message this week. I want to thank all of you for watching the videos, liking the videos, commenting on the videos. Thank you for liking my Facebook posts. Uh, if you're new to the videos, you can follow me on my Facebook page, Colleen Lemma. I do astrological posts every day. Or my business page, Sacred Soul Empowerment on Facebook, where I uh, put daily inspiring or empowering posts that you can also read. If you'd like a personal reading or healing with me, I would love to be able to help you in all these spiritual astrological energies and how they relate to your chart on a personal level. And just check out my services on sacredsoulempowerment.com. There's several different services available that you can choose from. So for all of you in the United States, happy Thanksgiving this week. For all of you around the world, I send you all of my love and thanks and gratitude for being out there and supporting me. And I send many, many, many angel blessings to all of you.